Thank you, everybody, for joining our Living God's Light question and answer with Vinny today, uh, May 23rd, 2023. And um, once we get started here, uh, we'll go ahead and get the video set up and, and rolling, uh, focused on Vinny. Uh, the format today, we've got several questions, over 150 that we received from people, so we'll only be able to get to a few of them. Uh, so I'll go ahead and ask those questions to Vinny, and, and he doesn't know what questions are coming, so this should be fun. Uh, one of the couple of things that I wanted to mention that we have come up in previous Q and A's. Um, there's one of the questions from last time. Even though Living God's Light is uh, really not a focus on any particular religious tradition, talking about spiritual things necessarily sometimes dips into religion. And I was asked on the side if this is a non-denominational thing, why are we talking about religion? Um, so just realize that a lot of the things it's hard to strike that perfect balance. And in some cases it's impossible because there's so many different perspectives and people have different expectations. Uh, it's difficult not to upset somebody's sensibilities uh, with that. And so the only option is really not say anything and, and that's not a good option at all. Uh, so just realize as we go through this, everybody's experience is different. Some of the questions reflect that everybody's experience is different. Um, and as is the interpretation of that experience, uh, so you may hear some things that challenge your understanding. What I've learned through all of this, because uh, sometimes my understanding is challenged as well, everything we talk about tonight is Vinny's experience and his understanding of that experience. And it's gonna be up to you to decide how you're going to take that information and add it to your experience. And really what bottom line what it is, is how can that help you with your relationship with God? So take what helps you, leave what doesn't, and we're all here on this journey together. Uh, Vinny, anything else you'd like to add in addition to that? Yeah, I think that I'd like to just reiterate what you said that, you know, I don't share my experience to be gospel for someone. I share it to be a positive influence for people. Um, I know I had my exact experience that I was supposed to have to help me along my path and to essentially activate my path of light towards my creator. And that's what I share it for. I share it for all religions. I share it for all faiths, all backgrounds, even for agnostics, um, so that people can understand that they have a divine path. And, and really, that's what it's all about, is helping activate your own light, no matter what religion you follow, and, and helping you find and discern that light, that direction for yourself. And that's what we're all about at Living God's Light, is to help um, that activation process, that, uh, that discernment process, and that ability to listen to that intuitive nature, that inner voice, uh, to guide you in the right direction. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so two other things uh, we'll mention, uh, some questions that came up. What, somebody was asking, when is the book going to be available in Europe? Uh, we've had a couple different countries ask that. We are in the process of working with our publisher to get the book in hard copy in other countries. It's kind of a long process, but we're working on it. Uh, we're excited to have that happen. Um, also a question, when is the workbook going to be ready? Uh, many of you know that we've been working on a workbook that helps you implement the 10 principles that uh, is, are taught in The Light After Death. Uh, our plan right now is to have the first printed version of that available to folks who attend the retreat in August so they can review it. Uh, it's taken a bit longer than we thought. As I was telling Vinny, it's, it's been a labor of love, equal parts labor and love, um, but we're working on it. And we're excited to get that to you as soon as we can. Uh, so one last note. Um, so Living God's Light has now been formed as a nonprofit organization. Really excited about that, uh, officially recognized Nationally, we got all the legal things taken care of. Um, and so with that, we now have a spot on the website at livinggodslight.com for a donation button, which are, again goes to the nonprofit. And that helps us to spread the message of Living God's Light. Um, just mention that, uh, put that out there. That also will have that uh, links to that in the comments once the video is posted. And anything else, Vinny, if, unless you've got anything else you want to add, I'll start hitting you with questions. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I just want to welcome everybody here tonight. I uh, want to give you um, all the love and gratitude that I contain in myself for, for showing up here tonight uh, to listen, 
to partake and to be a part of this process. Even if you're watching this in replay, I send you love and light in, in your journey and want to, to send my gratification to everyone for being here tonight. All right. Uh, so Vinny, first question, some questions that come up pretty, pretty frequently. Um, so the really quick, what was the substance that caused the reaction What caused your death? So I get this one quite a bit. It was a product called Furanone to Hydro. Um, what it would do is it would go into your body and it would essentially um, convert while it's in your body and allow your body to um, double its normal healing time for muscle tissues. Um, it was very close to like a human growth hormone type product, um, but it was the current rage of all of, of, of the day. It was very popular at the time. Um, and, and, you know, they messed around with like seven different versions of it before finally actually it did get made illegal in the United States because of people that ended up running into the same problems that me and my buddy did. They ended up buying it overseas and, and not realizing it was different overseas than what you're buying at the GNC. Yeah. All right. And uh, what made you decide to share your story 20 years after it happened? So um, I've actually been sharing it um, essentially almost since right after. Now, it did take me a good year to get to a point where I could share it and not cry about it. So I did, uh, well, I could, I was crying about it, but it was very hard to communicate the experience without just weeping. Uh, so it did take me about a year, year and a half. So I started sharing it publicly uh, around the fall of 2004. Um, and around by Christmas, essentially of 2004, I'd shared it with a public group already by then. And then I've been sharing it since. Um, I didn't do a book though. I would get requested all the time to do a book and even had a couple uh, owners of, of published houses come to me and say, hey, I want this as a book. And I, I felt like I was gonna do it injustice. I'm, I'm not the, the most articulate person. I didn't feel that I would, I would do my experience justice. I felt I would do it in injustice, even to put it down in words. Uh, I even felt that in sharing the experience verbally, it's very hard to express verbally even um, what heaven is like and what all of that is like, because it's, it's bigger and, and greater than what our words can describe. And it wasn't until I was sitting up at this ranch in Southern Utah and um, I came across this guy, Lynn, and, and I asked, is this the one who's supposed to help me? And it was so strong not just yes, a resounding yes. And it was like, as if every spirit that was around me said yes, almost like it was a choir of yeses. <laughs> and at that point, I now knew I had help. I just had to figure out how to communicate it to him. And, and sure enough, it was easy to communicate him. He was open to it. So, um, you know, we both kind of stepped out of our comfort zone to make it happen. And, um, and, and truly, I'm so grateful for the editing process because it was actually a great book. And after editing, it was an amazing book. And I'll say that between the, the creative um, writing of Lynn to be able to take my spoken story and turn it into a written story and ask all the right questions and to have a whole nother layer of editing to ask even more additional questions that need to be asked so that we could get clarification through the whole process for the reader for, for the one that we're taking on the journey. Um, I'm so grateful for that whole process, but that's the whole reason why I did uh, publish it is because of other people coming up to me after I spoke this, the experience to them. They, they kind of uh, hounded me for years, actually. I had a little list. I had a little like wait list that one day when I did publish it, that I would reach out to these people. And um, they were some of the first people that I did reach out to as the people who asked me, hey, please, you know, write this down, document it. That's how, that's how I came about actually recording it and writing it is because of demand, because of people hearing it, they wanted a copy, they could take home, they could share with people. Um, and then they would have questions, you know, there was a lot, I, you know, if you go through the story itself, there's a lot there. And certain people resonate with certain principles, other people resonate with other principles. And, and they wanted a version they could share with everyone. So that's the reason we have it today. Oh, thank you. 
the next question, uh, were there, and I, I partly know the answer to this already, but were there things from your experience that you felt that you shouldn't share? And they're not asking for you to share any of those. Um, just, uh, and this is why I'm, I'm bringing this question forward. As, as people are on their own spiritual journeys, um, this person says, I struggle with being so excited to share the truths that I learned that I sometimes don't consider the audience or the listener as carefully as I should. Uh, how do you navigate knowing things and not sharing them? Uh, I know a lot of about is follow, a lot of this is thought about following the spirit, but I'm curious to gain any insights you have on knowing when to share and when not to. So I I've learned over the years, the many years of sharing this experience that you don't just share it with anybody. Um, as soon as somebody would ask me about it, uh, there was a time where I would just share it with them. And there's that, that good old saying in the scripture about casting your pearls before swines and, and not that anyone's a swine, but I'm, but there's times where people are ready to receive it. There's times where they're asking and they're actually not ready to receive it. So even because, even though someone's asking to know more about the story they're not ready for the story necessarily so what i always do is i put it to my team and when i say my team my my guides that i work with daily my spirit team that i've worked with since i came back um they're kind of uh, my helpers i call them my spirit family they're there with me everywhere i go we all have these team members around us whether we recognize it or not we do and i use them they help me understand when it is time to share there's been time where I'm in the middle of sharing it and they tell me to, to, to hush up, time to, to button up and go home. And so I'll do that and I'll follow them. And sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. But always following them will always lead me in the right direction and, and serve to the betterment of me and, and those around me. So I tend to follow what they say to say. And, and is there more? Yes, there's, there's definitely more. Um, again, like I said before, the experience is larger than words. So could I go into more detail in just even what we've already described? Absolutely. I could probably write two or three books just about the heaven experience, just what it's like in heaven. I feel that I could write probably, well, with the right help, I could write a book that's probably four or five hours just about the grass in heaven. And I'm not exaggerating at all. I could literally go into... I could go grass nerd on you and and talk about the differences between the grass there and grass here and and why it's so different and how I could actually feel the presence of God coming from that grass and from all the creations in heaven and just the the masterful love that I felt from coming from everything there and 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 yes so there is quite a bit more that I could go over in just dissecting what I've already shared there is a bit more that I saw and experienced, but it's not something that's, that's supposed to be shared publicly. And they, it's been very, very clear from day one that I don't share that. Um, uh, it's just something personal and, and, and things that I got to see, I guess, um, for good or for bad. <laughs> it's, it's something that they, every time I ask, they're always like, nope, uh, you gotta keep that personal for now. Uh, that that doesn't mean it's always going to be that way, I guess. But um, for now, that's what they they tell me is is keep it personal for now. But I, I have shared as much as, um, in fact, they've let me go further than what I was even comfortable in sharing in publishing the book. I, I tell a lot more of my personal story than even I was ready to share. But it was the right way and the right message to share my personal journey after the experience. And, and it also plays a part too. It plays a part of that story. Yeah. Thank you. I hope so, that answered it, right? Does that yeah, answer it? I think yeah, it, does, it did. Right? Yeah, it did. Uh, so we've we got, you talked a bit about guides and I actually have several questions uh, about guides and how that, uh, how they play in. So I'll share several questions on that. Um, so one of them is how do we best, ex well, so one question, what is the difference between um, so when you say spirit and guides and God, how do those relate to each other? And how is um, like our guides and God, that whole interaction, how does, how do we navigate that? Okay. So imagine, imagine um, 
let, let's equate it to a brand everybody can recognize. Let's say a major soda, soda pop brand, a major soda brand like, like Coke or something like that. Um, you can see that brand all over the place uh, and get influence of that brand everywhere at every store, at gas stations, at, um, you know, everywhere you go, you can get influence of this brand. Um, is it all the same? Yes. But is it truly the same? No, because there's separate bottles, separate sodas, separate, but it's still the same stuff everywhere you go. Um, as if God is that brand. God has teams and teams of beings to help us uh, to build the framework of this existence and to keep it going. Because it actually takes quite a bit of work to keep this earth school open. And there's a lot of staff members <laughs> on this side of the veil and on the other side. And it takes a lot of those workers. And so anywhere that that, that love is there to touch us, to influence us, and to inspire us, that's God. Is it actually God? Yes, in the way that it's his love. It's the creator's love of us that fuels the whole system. Um, is it the, the actual creator? Um, in essence, yes, because it's representatives of the creator. Um, if you want to call them angels, if you want to call them guides, if you want to call them ancestors, loved ones, guardians, um, whatever you know, you're comfortable calling them, it's still God's love for us. And that's what makes it all function. And a lot of religions call that um, Holy Ghost or God's Spirit. And, and uh, when we're receiving that message of love, inspiration, and, and direction from our creator, it's being delivered by the spirit of God, the spirit of our creator. So you can call it spirit, you can call it guides, you can call it whatever you want. It's still the same thing. It's God's spirit influencing, helping, and guiding us. And how do we strengthen that connection how do we improve that connection of receiving that guidance from god through spirit so the hardest part is to believe that it exists that's the hardest part because in our world we tend to not want to believe what we can't see but the beautiful thing is we've learned from physics modernly from physics that our brains just to believe something it starts changing something for us in the physical realm. And it is with our intention that we can start that process. Now that process is already there, but it strengthens it to believe it first. So first we have to believe that God loves us enough to send us personal direction. Once we believe that, that's where it begins. And then um, once you believe it, you start creating a little window for that voice to show up. And one perfect way is to add to your morning regimen or to your evening regimen, who needs me today? Who needs me to reach out to them today? And you're not going to hear a name or hear a, a voice or see a face right away. But once in a while, when you ask that question and wait for an answer, you'll get an answer. And the coolest thing is when you follow that answer. When you follow what comes to you, it, it gives that whole process strength. So once you receive communication from God, allow yourself to follow that communication and it strengthens that whole process. So now you get to um, facilitate a stronger connection with the creator. Awesome, thank you. And so there's, as we know- there I, want, are, so, I'll, I wanna add real quick to that, yeah. it, the, the fuel, that makes that whole system run is love. So if you can add love to what you're doing, it makes it even stronger. It's like, it's like you're already cooking, throw some gas on it. It's gonna cook a lot faster, yeah. <laughs> so we know there's also, and we talk about this, the opposition. Um, I mean, it, it talks in the book about you know, the, the purpose of, of evil and that opposition. How do we recognize when we're getting uh, messages from a good influence as opposed to a influence that's trying to pull us farther away from God? How do we differentiate that? It is super, super easy. Ask yourself, ask yourself, does this answer make me feel loved 
or does this answer make me feel fear? And if you're not sure, most likely it's actually fear because love is very distinct to us. And to get an answer and we feel love, we know that's coming from the creator because that's the actual energy that the creator speaks to us with. Now, if it comes to us out of a place of fear, that's where I, I completely identify that we can be influenced by negative energy, by negative spirits, um, because they like to send us fear. And, and if you don't think that's real, go watch the news for five minutes and tell me that fear is not powerful. It is. Almost everything you watch in news today is fear-based or fear-influential. To me, I see that as what it is. It is um, Luciferian or Satan-based or evil-based because fear is the exact opposite of God. God is love. God, our creator, is literally love. Yeah. So next question um, on, well, I'll just read what it says here. Uh, when reading your stories about the guides that we have, I thought uh, what I really need is a guide to help me when I get stuck with computer problems. It seems that since then, there have been several times when I've had computer problems and the solution has come to me that I normally would not have been able to figure out myself. Can we ask for guides with certain skill sets to help us? Absolutely. And because here's the beautiful thing about our creator's love. Our creator's love is perfect and all knowledgeable. So that when we really synchronize to that love frequency or that love energy, and we ask for help, and, and we recognize that we're, we don't own the answer ourselves, but we're reaching out to God for the answer, and we're feeling love, the answers will start coming. In the beginning, they're going to be baby answers until we can accept them, embrace them, and, and allow them to perform in our lives. As we embrace those baby answers, we get, we get you know, teenager answers, and then adult answers. We get some big answers uh, if we follow that process, that whole process of allowing God to do this. And, and I've seen this firsthand. I, I saw this actually in my life long before I had my experience, that if you could, if you could exist in a place of love and put it out to God for an answer, the answers just start flowing through you. Um, a lot of creative people like artists, writers, musicians, they will tell you that there's certain times where, um, the energy starts coming through them and it's almost like they need to get out of the way of it themselves and just let it flow through them. And that's when you know you're really synchronizing at the frequency of God, which is love. When you're really loving what you're doing, you're able to open that channel of, of the creator into you. And yes, it can help you with computers. It can help you with law. Um, after my experience, I can pretty much take almost any test without studying, not that I set this up, but I kind of do on accident. Um, I can pretty much take any test and get an 80% without knowing anything before I, I start that test. And it's because I open myself up in a love space. I allow the answer to come and it shows up. Um, and, and it's awesome. There's people that come to me. They're like, how did you know this, this, and this? And, you know, sometimes I can honestly tell them I didn't know that it just came to me right when you were asking. And then other times, uh, you know, I don't have a relationship where I can be honest like that. I'll just say, I don't know. It's, it's kind of amazing how this universe works <laughs> because it's still true, but uh, it's an, an answer they were willing to accept. But I'm telling you, there's been so many times where I'm working with somebody and, and something just comes to me. I can essentially eradicate um, people's problems before they even show up in question when I follow that love frequency and I'm working with people. Yeah. Well, thanks. Tied to that uh, in developing that relationship, talking a little bit more specifically about meditation and prayer. Um, somebody said, I'm currently having a major spiritual awakening. I want to home in on my intuition and a higher self, but not sure where to start or how. I think I may be meditating wrong. Do you have any suggestions? So the first thing to do is take that little part in your brain that's a judge of good or bad of how you're doing something and throw that part of your brain away. Literally stop judging yourself on I'm doing this good or I'm doing this bad because you always get an A for effort when it comes to God. Just keep trying. Just keep, just like the old song, just keep trying, just keep trying, just keep trying. And guess what? Uh, you're going to see results. 
keep showing up, giving God time, waiting for the answers. That's a big part. So many people ask God for something, just like if they drive up to the drive through uh, restaurant window, they, they order their food and then they drive straight home and they're like, how come I don't have any food? And it's because they never stopped for even a moment to pick up the food. They ordered it. Then they just drove straight home. We do that with our prayer. We do that with our intention. Sometimes we ask God for something. We ask our creator with love. Hey, please give this to me. And then we hurry and go about our day. We need to give God some time in our day. So ask what we want with love and then give some time, give some quiet time, some inspiration time, some quiet time. You can study Holy Scripture. You can listen to some, some nice soft music, some meditation music, but give God some time to give you the answers. Because if we knock on the door and we wait for the door to open up, it will open. It's just a matter of knocking the right way, waiting long enough, and having the right spirit about it. But here's the problem that will happen. Sometimes the door opens, we receive the answer, and we're like, that's not the answer I wanted. And, and sometimes we get a little disappointed. Well, guess what? It's not always the answer we wanted, but it's the right answer, though. And if we start trusting that, we'll realize that the, the right answer is the one that comes. Yeah. Thanks. And with that, um, like in trying to meditate and all the rest, so many times it's hard to get uh, mind still, kind of get calmed down. Do you have any tips in like how to, how to meditate, how to still your mind, how to get focused on that. Absolutely. Um, to me, the easiest way to begin your meditation is focus on your breath. So focus, I, I call it a, a count pattern. You can do a 333, a 444, a 555. What this is, is you count your breaths in, you count your breaths out, and you do it that many times. So a 333 would be three counts in, three counts out three times. And uh, by doing so, what you're doing is you're allowing, it's kind of like an exercise for the consciousness. You allow the conscious brain to focus on counting your breaths, but that's something really easy to do. So after you start doing it your first or second time, it gives the back of your consciousness, your subconsciousness, where your higher self and your spirit reside. And that gives it some time and some, some space to start influencing you in a positive way, to connect to you yourself in a positive way and give you um, some ins inspiration. But we, again, we need to remove judgment though. Uh, many, many times I, you know, when I lead meditations and such, I hear, man, I wish I would have saw something. All I saw was, and then they describe it to me. <laughs> and I get, I get blown away because what they describe to me is way better than what I was seeing. And so, you know, we need to remove judgment of, you know, oh, everyone around me is having a better meditation than me. No, everyone's having the meditation they're supposed to have. Um, that's the beautiful thing about this life. We will be given exactly what we need when we need it. So embrace that energy and, and allow to come through what comes through. Don't second guess it. Don't judge it. Just recognize it when it's love-based or fear-based. When it's fear-based, kick it out. When it's love-based, uh, embrace it, embolden yourself with it, and follow it. Have the faith to follow the love-based messages. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next question is a little bit different, a shift, uh, more having to do with prayer. So what's the point of praying for an outcome that's never going to happen because the problem you have is a result of your life plan, something you're supposed to go through? Okay. What the, the best recommendation I have for this is pray for the best outcome and turn the problem over to God. Stop feeling like you have to carry the problem. Stop feeling like you have to carry the solutions to the problems. Take the problem. Say, God, this problem's bigger than me. Please take it from me and help me to know the path, know the solution, know the way to get through this. And, and that will come. That will come in, in amazing ways. And, um, you know, answers come in all sorts of different forms. But don't be the one who prays for um, a life raft and deny the helicopter and deny uh, the swimmer and deny 
<laughs> the the jet ski boat because none of those are the life raft. Um, you know, don't turn away the help that shows up. Embrace the help that shows up because the help that shows up will be the right help. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so we had several questions talking about um, life after this one. And uh, one of these questions is, uh, says no one should be afraid of death uh, as shown by your unique experience. How do I share this with my spouse who is worried and very scared of dying so much that they don't even want to talk about that day, even though it's inevitable? Well, a lot of times people are afraid of dealing with this because it's something that's outside their control. And, and really, I understand that. I do. I was there before I had my existence or my experience. And, and even though I felt I was kind of invincible, I was somewhat afraid of death. But it, I had this weird sense, though, even at a young age, that um, I knew that we were much bigger than this realm. I knew it. I don't know how I knew it, but I knew it. And when I had my experience, it just, it signaled that, it confirmed that for me. It helped me to understand that our existence, our real existence is that existence. That here in earth school, it's our little mini existence. It's our, it's our break in between programs. It's, it's the little pit stop we come to, to learn something real quick. Because in the eternal scheme of things, 80 to 100 years is nothing when we live for eons before this, and we live for an eternity after this, you know, 80 to 100 years is really nothing. Um, so for someone, you know, to answer that question, how do you share it with them? Lovingly embrace their right to not want to address it. Um, but help them to lovingly embrace your right to lovingly address it, and keep addressing it with absolute love and excitement. And what will happen is you'll you'll start influencing them in a positive way to help them start seeing it in a different light. But the the best way we can help others with that is through prayer. You know, in whatever form of prayer you accept or your religion accepts, use that form of prayer to ask for heaven, to ask for our creator, to help them with this. Help them that, so that they're not so afraid of it. And and you'll notice a change. Maybe not right away, but you will notice a change. It will happen eventually. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and if we have a loved one who has passed on, uh, will they experience our love? If we or how can we share our love with them after they've passed on? Are they aware of that? And if so, how do we do that? Do we have do we hold them in our mind? Do we send them a message? How is that communicated? So um, I recommend people communicate with their loved one the way that they they personally feel they can communicate the best some people can do that with, through spoken form some people can do that through written form they can really express their love for their loved one i do this on a regular basis i encourage people to do um, a gratitude journal and in that gratitude journal write letters to your loved ones those who you know your loved ones who have gone to the other side you can write letters to them and what's really neat is there there's going to be times where you've written a letter to them and you're you're receiving the answer to that letter as you're writing the letter so you're actually feeling that loving response in your heart as you're actually writing the letter that that's a really uh beautiful way i've done it myself i lost my mom and um even though i'm a person you know in my weird crazy existence i can connect to my mom every single day if i want to but where I connect to my mom is very different than the physical space that I would connect to her when she lived in this physical realm. But I, when I do the letter thing and I write a letter to my mom, I hear her answering that letter by the time I'm done, when I'm down to the bottom of that letter. I feel it. I feel it so strongly. I can even hear her voice sometimes with that one. So, um, you know, I encourage that. Speak and express it the way you're comfortable doing it. But here's the beautiful thing. Even to think about your loved one, your loved one hears it. And you miss them, they feel that missing them. And, and it makes them feel special and precious. And, and, and God loves it when we miss our, our loved ones. Because we're, we're paying homage to them, we're paying love to them. And anytime we're sending love through the veil to God and to our ancestors, 
that's that's completely received with blessing, with with love, and with helpers to help that message get delivered. So even if that person's not in a place where they could receive the message, the message will be delivered with heaven's help. Um, so just send a message with your thoughts, with your writing down, with your spoken word, whatever you know resonates with you. Use that, and and heaven will help it happen. It'll happen on its own. Yeah. And so it sounds like uh, that applies even uh, so like in the light after death, talking about the um, the Italian man who was still trying to cleanse a lot of negativity that he had from his life. He eventually got there, but then there was also um, like a whole host of angels coming to help one of these groups that were about to graduate mm -hmm. is the word I used. So similar to that, somebody who's uh, may have tragically passed on this side or passed over as they're going through that cleansing process, we can help them through that by sharing that love. Yes, absolutely. And there's some real blessing in the way God's worked this out for us. When someone passes tragically, um, they technically actually exit their body early before the tragedy happens. Most times they witness the tragedy from outside their body so that it's actually just their body. Um, receiving the tragedy and and there's real blessing in that and it's done you know by the work of god by the the work of the creator and angels working in in proxy with god to facilitate this process so that it's just the body that goes through this traumatic process not the actual soul or spirit now for the soul or spirit just to witness it there is some trauma there that's where heaven comes in whether they end up in one of these pearls outside heaven or they have a special dome in heaven. They have lots of them that someone who, you know, they fully embrace their transition, but they still have some kind of some, some ickiness they need to release of this life. They do that inside these domes in heaven too. So um, the cool thing is I've had a lot of people actually talk about these pearls that people get stuck in. It's not something that they even perceive time in. It's just something that they perceive a release. They perceive themselves releasing whatever things they need to get off their chest. It allows them to release that. Um, for instance, that gentleman I saw, you know, from the early 1900s, maybe late 1800s that I was watching him, he, he obviously been in there a while, but he was not aware of the amount of time passing because time doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. I just happened to see the very moment that he got done he got done. He exited that last energy off of him. He took this deep breath and realized he was surrounded by angels. And this, the second he realized that, they lovingly escorted him into heaven. And, and, you know, it's not a scary process or a bad process for any of us to end up in one of these pearls to cleanse ourselves. It's just like if we go to a special pool, you want to shower before you go in the special pool of water. It's the same same process that we want to cleanse ourselves of the the influences of this life before we go into heaven. And if we're in one of these pearls, so be it. Um, we don't want to encourage it, of course. But at the same time, if we end up one, it's still a, a process of love. We're being loved through this whole process all the way through. We're, we're being loved, surrounded by this love. That the second we're ready to peel away from what we needed to release, then there's angels, there's helpers. There's guardians right there to escort us into heaven. So um, I, I think I answered that, right? Did I answer that? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you. I get long-winded on stuff, and I'll, <laughs> I'll forget if I answered it or not. <laughs> oh, that's all great. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to kind of another area, uh, you would mentioned in the book um, about using your ego make you stronger. So what does it look like to use your ego carefully and intentionally to make yourself stronger instead of like stubbing your toe on it? So ego is an acronym for edging God out. It would be the opposite of your higher self or your spirit or your soul. Um, but it's, it serves a purpose. If we don't have an ego, we don't have anything anchoring us here in earth school. Then we would just go right back to heaven. And so the ego is a presence or an energy of the body. And so it's going to serve its purpose of keeping you out of danger. It's your ego that says, put on your seatbelt so you don't die because of a car crash. It's, uh, it's your ego that says, don't go to 
do something new because you could hurt yourself or someone could judge you. So it, it has a purpose. It is going to preserve our physical life, but it cares nothing about the soul. It doesn't care about the soul at all. It cares about the physical body and it cares about preventing harm on the physical body. That's the purpose of the ego. Um, and again, to not have ego is to not have any voice um, looking out for the body. Now your soul, your spirit, is the voice that keeps track of your higher self, your intuitive nature, um, your, your God voice, the voice that you hear God speaking to you through. That's your higher self. That's your soul, your spirit. That's the opposite of the ego. And the way I like to uh, equate it is the white wolf and the black wolf, the story of the two wolves. You, all of us get to feed the white wolf or the black wolf. And is it important for us to feed both? Yes. Because if you don't feed one, it will become voracious and take over. So you need to feed both, but you need to controllably feed who you want to control things. So if you want your higher self, your spirit to, to be in control the most, then feed it the most. And how do you feed your spirit? How do you feed your higher self? You do it through loving others, feeling love from others. You do it through scripture, through studying God's word in all the different forms, um, in, in connecting to God through meditation. That's how you feed the spirit or the, or the white wolf. And how do you feed the black wolf? You eat food. You um, drink water. And so to eat clean food and clean water, you're, you're taking the black wolf's voice and making it a clean black wolf. So it, it, it cleans that voice up and it doesn't become as much of an enemy to the spirit. And, and, you know, in the scriptures, when they say the natural man is an enemy to God, that's how it is. It's our anchoring of who we are here. So we do need to, um, we need to strike a balance with ego, but someone who says, I get rid of my ego. I don't follow my ego. That person's going to be sick all the time. They will follow this person who says they, they completely ignore their ego. They will be sick all the time. Ego is there to keep us anchored on earth. It plays a role, it plays a part. It's kind of like walking into a gym. If you didn't have gravity, you wouldn't lift weights. You wouldn't be able to build any muscles. And ego is the weight to give us the gravity to your, to your weights. So you have the ability to build the muscles. It's kind of, kind of complicated with that, but I'm telling you that's how it works. Um, ego is the opposite of spirit. So to have both is, is giving us the ability to choose. And that's, that's the caretaker of the white wolf and the black wolf. That's all of us. We are all caretakers to both wolves. We get to feed both. We get to caretake both. And if we feed one too much, it's going to do it at a disservice to the other. Um, we can feed one over the other, not a problem. But we need to make sure that both are receiving nourishment. And there's ways to do that in a positive way. You just have to figure it out for yourself. How do I feed my black wolf while also feeding my wolf, white wolf? And that's when you, fight, you find um, success. And most times that's, you know, creating motion with your body, eating clean, drinking clean, and staying away from world stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this next question, it's a pretty simple question, but the answer I'm sure is not. Uh, this person says, I feel so lost in my walk with God. How do I get back on track? So a lot of times people feel that there's some special destination to this life. But what they lose is that the fact that the journey is the destination. We're going to learn far more from the struggle and the effort it takes to succeed than we ever are going to learn from actually achieving the success. Does that make sense? So basically so focus, the, the, the journey is the purpose, not the destination. Yes. So, so allow the journey to become the destination. Allow the journey, enjoy the journey, make the journey enjoyable, and the destination will also be enjoyable. Um, but, but don't put yourself the expectation of you need to achieve this destination by certain dates. Um, don't build a box around God. God won't show up because when you build a box around God, you can't let the sun in. You need to allow God to show up where God's going to show up. And, and what's really neat about that is put your effort in. So put in your works, put in your faith, 
and God's going to show up one way or another. God's going to show up, but allow yourself to enjoy the journey. Stop and smell the roses. Even when you're short on time, it's going to make your life so much sweeter and enjoy that journey because that journey is what it's all about. And can you expand on the idea of loving everyone yet still setting boundaries with regards to the actions and decisions that people make? Absolutely. Recognize vampires. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about uh, the teenage heartthrob vampire. I'm talking about people that eat your energy. People that when they get near you, you feel like you can't walk away from them. You feel like you're doing them a disservice even to turn your back and walk away. These type of people, it's important for us to have them in our life, but in an, a controlled environment. So make sure that when you have an energy vampire near you, recognize it, put up a border near them so that any energy that's coming from them is being filtered to you. And how do you do that? To me personally, how I do it is I visualize so when I am working around someone like this or working with someone like this, or I, I am going to be working with someone like this, I will literally see a dome of light be placed over me. And as that energy vampire approaches, I recognize that any of the dark arrows trying to come through to draw on my energy, that they get turned into light. And I lovingly say a prayer or a meditation with the expectation to God and my guardians, my helpers to say, Hey, when I'm near this person, help this system that God's put into place to translate or convert any negative energy into light energy or positive energy, or just block it. So it doesn't affect me. And it really, really works. But the hard part is, is when one of these people sneak in and you weren't able to that, put that protection. And that's, that's when you excuse yourself to go use the restroom, put that protection on you and come back out. It's going to be completely different. So, you know, invite heaven into your life and invite those protections into your life and they will show up. Speak to the angels, speak to your angels, find out who they are. If you don't know, um, you can find out there's lots of different ways to find out and, and work with your angels. They'll help you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Tied to that, and it may be a very similar answer, uh, after having your experience and having seen everything that's on the other side, how do you cope with day-to-day -day life? Like, how do you deal with unpleasantness and, and just unfortunate things that happen? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, it's, not, it's not super easy. Today's the, today the 23rd of May. And, you know, starting on the 19th, about four days ago, there was a big energy change that happened on earth. And whenever these big energy changes happen, I feel them for about three to four days. And, and it wasn't just me feeling this. A lot of people, a lot of people were feeling this um, energy hiccup or this big, big uh, pumping energy coming into the earth space. And, um, and that's quite difficult to have this happen but yet I know it's going to happen. And, and what I do is I just keep doing my best when I have my down days, which everybody's going to have a down day. When I have those, I call in heaven. I call in my helpers, my guardians, my guides, my ancestors, my loved ones. I call in my teams and, and then I make sure that to the best of my ability, I don't indulge myself into any negative energy. That's the hardest part, though, because when we get into a downward cycle in this life, the first thing we reach out to is the bad foods, the bad shows, and the news. <laughs> and it's like, those are the things we shouldn't be reaching for at all on a downward cycle. That's the opposite of what we should reach for. So if we want to change the, the, the downward cycle that a lot of us go through when we're feeling down, do not reach for the bad foods. Reach for good food or don't reach for any food at all. You're better to fast than to eat bad food when you're in a downward cycle. Reach out for the good energies, the good shows, the uplifting shows, the uplifting YouTube channels. There's so much good content now on YouTube. It's really amazing. What you search for, you will get. If you search for good, you'll get good. If you search for bad, you're going to get bad. So seek the good things and that way you can 
allow yourself to get through the down the down periods. But you know, to to say that there's not a down period is to not to live. We're all going to have ups and downs, but it's important for us to recognize the peaks of life and the valleys of life, because with both we learn. We learn from the peaks and we learn from the valleys, but sometimes we learn the most from climbing out of those valleys and getting back to another peak. So it is important for us to have those as part of our growth, as part of our, our, um, our progression as a soul, as a spirit. So you, you need to embrace it, accept it. And, and sometimes that actually is very hard for me to accept and embrace because um, I do. I actually have a regular cycle of that in my life. Thanks. And I think the next question is kind of tied to that. Um, so I'll read the question and then I'll, I'll clarify a little bit. So what kind of work do you do to work on yourself and heal parts of you that need it? I imagine that means not only physically, but maybe spiritually and emotionally, uh, past traumas, things like that. What are some things that you found are effective, some ways that you found are effective to get through that? So I am a huge believer in a program called the Emotion Code and the Body Code. Um, I feel an inspired doctor was able to discover and put together the understanding of what the Emotion Code and the Body Code is. But you don't need to, to follow his regimen. Just open yourself up to spirit and put the intention out there that you would like to heal. Sometimes it could take you five years or 50 years to get that healing that you could do with a good system, a good, um, a good program that works. But what I, I encourage people to do is start with the intention and ask God to help you discover the system that's going to work for you. And then be aware when someone hands you a card or talks about how they were healed from this or how they were able to clear up this past trauma in their own life. You know, listen to those around you after you've said the prayer or put out the intention that you would like to heal yourself and God will direct you. Our, our creator is very, very good at this in getting you to the exact right teacher to, to teach you what you need to learn to heal. Um, but again, I'm a, a big believer in emotion code and body code. Very, very successful for me. And I've used it in my own family. I use it with a lot of my coaching clients. Um, uh, on a regular basis, and it works very well. I also understand um, the use of energy because everything is energy. And there's a lot of different modalities to help you with energy. There's reflexology, there's shiatsu massage, um, pressure point massage. Um, there's, there's, there's really a lot that you can find, but when you put it out to God, to our loving creator, what's the best way for me to find healing? you're going to get answers. Maybe not the next day, but you're going to start getting answers. Don't turn them away and be aware when the answers come, because then you'll actually get the exact answer you need for your own healing. Yeah. Thanks. And this is kind of an expansion of that question and touches on something that we may have already covered a little bit, but um, the question is, how, how can we learn to stop doubting ourselves? And of course, there's all, everything else that's tied to that. But, but doubt, I think, is something that's that keeps us from recognizing the connection, from believing that we have a connection. Um, I know I'll admit in my own life, uh, as you know, for decades, I doubted my ability to recognize spiritual impressions. Um, my world has totally changed now after working with Drake on the book. But uh, how, how can we learn to stop doubting ourselves and be confident in where we're at and what we're doing? So it begins with uh, your desire to stop doubting yourself. So ask God and say, God, please help me stop doubting myself and, and help me recognize when I'm doubting myself when I shouldn't. And you're going to start seeing, you're going to actually start hearing an alternate voice because we all have that ego voice in our brain that says, you can't do that. You can't say that. And then there's gonna, we're going to hear a little tiny voice that says, actually, you can. Actually, you can do this. Actually, you can say this in a loving way. And, and first, we need to ask and say, say, God, our loving creator, help me to dissuade my ego voice or dissuade my fear-based voice and allow me to discover 
my love-based voice, my passion voice based on love. And that's where it begins. That's where it begins. And then start doing it. Recognize when, and, and that's how it starts you. You ask to be able to recognize when it is your doubting voice. And, and as soon as you start recognizing it, you can kick it out and say, I'm not going to listen to you for today. You don't need to say forever. You're going to say, ego, I want you to get back in my wallet. I'm going to put you in my back pocket where you need to be. And I'm going to not let you edge God out today. I, I can let you back out tomorrow, but today for today, I'm going to listen to God. And, and then you take it one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time, and then years at a time. But it'll sneak up on you once in a while. It, it hit me the other day. I, was, I let ego jump in and say, you can't do this. You can't do that. And I have a whole team of people of spirit saying, yes, you can. You need to listen to us. Stop listening to yourself. And, and thankfully, I have that. We all have that once we start training ourselves to listen to it. We do. It starts with stopping the little tiny doubting voice and listening to the good voices, the good voice from God, from our guides, for our, our loved ones, our angels. And that's where it begins. Yeah. And I recognize we're coming up on time, but I've got three other questions that I'd really love to ask. Okay, uh, we're good. Let's okay. go for it. Uh, so one of the questions is, how can we better understand our purpose in this present incarnation here on Earth? <laughs> that is freaking hilarious. So I love this. Um, I love that I don't get these questions beforehand. Um, because I'm going to show you. <laughs> I wrote this this morning. <laughs> this came through in a meditation. Let me see if you can read that. Does that show up? So purpose yeah, yeah. and happiness. Purpose, happiness. Uh -huh. So they had me write this this morning in my morning meditation. And it didn't make any sense to me. And I, and I just chalked it up to this is this must be something that I is going to come out later. And here we are having a call. You know, what is it 12 hours? No, because uh, this was that 6am. So uh, 13 hours later, here we are. And here's what it is. And I'll, I'll read to you exactly what they told me this morning. Ask yourself, who am I? Ask yourself, what I do? Ask yourself, who I do it for? Ask yourself, those who I do it for, what do they want or need? And then lastly, what do I get out of this work personally? And when you can honestly answer these questions, this is going to give you a roadmap to your own happiness. So ask yourself again, who am I? Uh, and, and a lot of people, we're going to throw out labels. We're going to throw out um, father, mother, male, female, um, he, she, they, whatever. We could throw out all these, these pronouns, all these labels. We can throw out all these things. And what I love, and this is actually part of our workbook, is once you think you figured it out, I want you to scribble it all out and write two words, divine masterwork. And masterwork, one word. <laughs> that's what we are. Whether you believe it or not, that's who we are. We are a divine masterwork. We are the cream of creation. We are the 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 top of the top to be here on earth school. We are one of the most precious, pristine creations ever to exist. And, and whether you believe it or not, doesn't change the fact that it's reality. It is reality for us to be here. We are a divine masterwork. Then ask yourself, what am I doing? What do I do? What do I bring to this world? And if you're not sure about that, Ask yourself a follow-up question. What makes me happy? What do I do that makes me happy? Then go back to that question. What do I do? And if what you do does not make you happy, go do something different. <laughs> go start doing what makes you happy. Even if you're doing something different for your job, make sure on a regular basis, you're doing that thing that makes you happy. Next, who do I do it for? Why am I doing all this? Why am I joining the rat race? Why am I going to work? Why am I putting in all this effort? Figure that out. And if you're not sure why, go or, or who you do this for, 
go be very discerning and be very intentional and start putting someone in that, that box of who you're doing it for. Do it for God, do it for yourself, do it for your loved ones, do it for heaven, do it for um, Allah, Krishna, Buddha, whoever you want to call your God, put them there if you need to. We've always been a non-denominational group loving, you know, living God's light. And it's important for us to figure out who are we doing all this for? And then next, what the people that we're doing this for, the, the beings that we're doing this for, what do they want or what do they need? And it's, it's so crazy because many times the very people that we're doing all this work for, they don't need what we're doing. <laughs> they need us to do something completely different. So we need to change that. So start changing and doing the things that we need to do that we can actually a- accomplish things for people. And then next, next is, of course, the last one. Um, what do I get out of my work? And if you don't get anything out of your work, change your work. I would much rather live at a lower income and a happier happiness level than a higher income and a higher lifestyle at a very miserable level. Because here's the thing, if you're living a miserable life, you're not going to live for very long. I'd rather be, be poor and happy than, than rich and miserable. But here's the thing, we don't have to choose one or the other. We can do both. God will guide us through both. God will help us so that we can fulfill our purpose and be passionate about what we're doing, make a difference in this world and make a decent living. Now, I don't mean income, but make a decent living, make a high quality of a living. Wealth and and, and abundance is not money. Our health can be our wealth. Our um, lifestyle can be our, our abundance. That is what our abundance is. Our quality of life is our abundance. And we can have an extremely high quality of life, no matter what income we're at, if we figure out our purpose and and allow happiness to be part of that purpose. So again, I come back to spirit. I love that spirit had me write this. Um, I love that they they had me go over this, that that you know, I love these cards. They I do these uh these card card stock, I write on card stock all the time. Everything I do, I write on card stock. But um, it's it's really cool that that that's how spirit works. That you know, 13 hours ago, they had had me write this down, not knowing at all that this was going to be a question on today's thing. And and I'll bet you, even if we track this email question, it might not even have been sent until just like an hour ago or something. So here it is. Spirit is having me prepare for something I don't even know I'm preparing for. I love that about spirit. That's how spirit always is. They know long before you need to do something, they, they prepare you for it. So um, kudos, kudos to my angels, kudos to, to Drake and my team. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thanks. Okay, two, two more. Um, so what is one habit that you do daily to honor God and yourself? So one thing I... I am doing right now as we're speaking is I'm grounding, I'm earthing. My feet are bare. They're on an earthing mat that's plugged in. This is part of my daily process. Um, the other day, I, I sleep on a, an earthing mat, a grounding mat. And that, that is one way. And this is, and the way that it honors my relationship with God is it keeps me in a frequency where I'm able to make a bigger difference in my life. It keeps me in a healthier frequency, a healthier love energy for my daily life, because it is the way that we used to be as humans. We used to not wear rubber soled shoes. We would be grounded everywhere we walked. We would sleep on the ground. And if we used a mattress of some sort, it was nature's mattress, not uh, more forms of rubber. So again, uh, you can purchase these earthing mats on Amazon, on a lot of different spaces. You can go to um, these alternative health places even at Trader Joe's and uh, some of these uh, health grocery stores, you can buy earthing mats and you can also buy earthing sheets. But this is one way that it's, it's kind of like insurance against everything else. It keeps me in a good place. But like I was saying, one night, I, I didn't sleep at all. I couldn't sleep through the whole night. and I didn't understand why. It's now been a long time since I've had a, 
a very sleepless night. And when I woke up the next morning, I realized that my grounding mat, my earthing mat had been moved by my son. He had rolled it up and moved it over to the side. And, and that makes sense now why um, I was not able to sleep because part of our biorhythms really function um, off of the electrical nature of our, our body. Um, but, but to truly go a not, whole nother level is I'm very intentional how I finish my day and I'm very intentional how I start my day. Um, if you follow what I, I talk about from what I learned, I call that the hour of power. I'm very, very specific in that last 30 minutes when I let in there. I, I typically like to make sure my last 30 minutes of my day is listening to an inspirational audiobook, a, a, a sleep meditation or a special meditation uh, from a source that I've trusted and worked with for a while. Or maybe it's my own voice in a meditation I'm listening to. I will, um, I make sure that that last 30 minutes of my day is, is the framework of my day. And I put something positive there. I also make sure that before I go to bed, I actually do a special prayer where I clear the energy of my home. I cast any negative energies out of my home. And I invite in my angels my loving ancestors, my guides, and my guardians into my home. And I'm very intentional with that every single night. Um, even if I'm super tired, I still do it. If I fell asleep before everyone else and I wake up in the middle of the night, I'll do it then. I make sure that I, I do that um, every single night if possible. And then in the morning, first thing I do, I want to make sure that the first thing I do when I wake up is something positive. And if that means I sit there and calmly meditate for five, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or I just focus on my breath work, or I stand outside and enjoy nature, or I, I connect to um, something that I'm trying to learn more about with, with specific things on, on YouTube, on meditations, on something, um, or I'll listen to a, a very positive podcast. I really love um, podcasts because it's something that is, allows you to go about your day and still have that positive influence while you're going about, you know, getting ready or getting up or doing the things you need to do, fix breakfast for the kids, get, you know, the thing, the day-to-day -day needs. So um, yeah, I really love honoring my hour of power. And that's how I create sacred space as well as my earthing. I do earthing and grounding um, every day. And like I said, right now, as we're speaking, my bare feet are on an earthing mat and it's plugged in. It keeps my, my bioenergetic field positive and grounded. And that's really, really important when you're an intuitive person. Very, very Im in, uh, important, yeah. Thanks. And one thing I'll mention, so uh, earthing mats, they're also sometimes called grounding mats. You can do a search for earthing grounding. Um, and as a somebody with an engineering background, I can say that uh, if you, uh, it, it's related to uh, if you do any work with electronics, people that, that mm -hmm. work with circuitry and things like that. Uh, my wife actually uh, does some things with robotics. Before this even, she has a grounding mat. You put a wrist strap on and that helps keep um, your circuits from getting fried because they can be super sensitive to any little uh, variations in electricity. So mm -hmm. uh, there's, um, in addition to using it personally for grounding and helping yourself stay grounded, uh, there's... Um, the scientific aspect of it that uh, little those little impulses can impact um, electronics and things like that when you're dealing with them. Well, it's funny. When I was a kid, I grew up in the computer industry. My dad owned a computer supply company and a computer company. And I remember we, you'd actually get these thick rubber mats that would come with the computer and it plugged in um, alongside of the computer. So you were sitting or standing on these mats when you worked on computers because they didn't know so much about static electricity and how that was going to affect us or the computers. And so back then, a lot of the K pros and compacts and a lot of these original computers came with them. Um, we've shied away from it because we've we've you know learned of better grounding methods for the electronic itself, but not for us. We were we were getting some benefits from it, and so now we're going back to it. You know, an, an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. All right. So last question. Um, what do you feel is the most important thing that we should be aware of or addressing right now? Uh, let me, okay. 
the most important thing that all of us should be understanding is there is divine organization to everything that we don't, you know, even when um, Chicken Little is out there on every news station saying that the sky is falling, we don't need to listen to Chicken Little. We can go out there in a loving place and understand that even when things look scary, even when changes are happening, that we don't have to embrace the fear aspect of these changes. We can embrace the love aspect. And that it's so vitally important for us to listen to the love voice inside of our heart. Because when that happens and there's, there's these great awakenings and these great changes happening around us, that if we listen to the love aspect to the direction in our life, we will always be in the right place to serve our higher purpose. But if we listen to the fear voice, because we both, we all have the dark wolf and the white wolf, listen to the white wolf. Don't listen to the dark wolf. Um, the fear voice that's in all of us, it, it, when we allow fear to dictate our decisions, is it going to be positive? Most likely not. Most times it's going to be a downgrade process for us, not an upgrade. So the more we can listen to that love voice, that's the voice that God speaks to us in. That's the, the, the frequency that God speaks to us in. God doesn't send us um, lightning uh, to, to scare us. God send us lightning to get rid of discharge. But when we're tuned into the love energy or the love message, we will be tuned into a message of, hey, clear out of this area right now. And we'll feel that. And then the lightning happens. So uh, it's important for us to be in tune with that love frequency that love communication and, and don't allow the world to program you with negative or fear energy. Don't allow it. And don't think that the world is going to catch on fire. Everybody says that this problem is going to happen. This problem is going to happen. This problem is going to happen. Well, guess what? They've always been saying these problems are going to end everything. Don't worry about it. Do your best to honor, love, and respect those around you the earth you live on, the home you live in, the car you drive. Just honor, respect, and love everything around you. And you're going you're gonna to be in the right place, the right time, and receive the right message. Trust it, embrace it, and love it. God will make you a tool in, in his hands. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, that includes all the questions. We actually went a little over time. Vinny, thank you for spending some more time with us. I'm sure we'll be doing more of these in the future. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much, you guys. I, I really appreciate everyone coming on. I've, I've been receiving my phone. I'm on a phone right now, by the way. And um, I've been getting like 100 um, little direct messages from my friends. I love you all. I want you to know I love you all. Um, please, if there's something that you sent in a direct message you need me to see, please email it through um, and I'll get it, okay? Because I I'm, I won't be able to see this. As soon as we end the call, I, I lose access to any of those uh, direct messages. Okay, love you all. Thank you so much for showing up. Yep. And uh, Vinny, one more, uh, give you one more thing. Just want to wrap up with a couple of things. If you guys have any questions or want to learn more, uh, livinggodslight.com. And then you can also email me at info at livinggodslight.com. Uh, I can also forward things on to Vinny. Uh, we're working on growing and expanding, but um, Vinny and I both have many things in the air including providing yes. for families and everything else so <laughs> thanks for your patience as we're, we're working on expanding and um, and growing this thank you for staying connected uh, we in addition to the workbook are working on many ways to share this message of the world um, and we thank you for being part of that journey we will have opportunities for people to get more involved and help more as as we get squared away um, but we're kind of following where we're led at the same time. So it's exciting. We're very, very grateful for your participation. And Vinny, any last words? And then we'll close with what you'd like to share. Yeah. Thank you again, everyone, for, for coming along. If you're even watching this in replay, thank you for watching it. Love you. And I love everyone's energy of even showing up because it is that loving voice inside you that's guiding you to hear and to listen to this and to have a positive influence around you. Um, I... I really love that we have this positive energy around us because there is so many of those negative voices. I love this, this ability for us to get together and communicate and, and actually shout out real quick for the retreat, our retreats half booked. 
Um, it, it happens the first week of August. So the second through the ninth is the long one. There's the short one and the long one. Um, so, you know, anybody who's interested, please sign up. Once it's sold out, it's done. We're not going to be able to add even one more spot. So um, we are very limited on that space. It is a beautiful, pristine place. If you haven't been to Timepiece Ranch, uh, just outside of, side of Zion's Canyon, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, and that's if you don't even go there to do anything, just show up and be at this great place. But we're going to be doing some really neat learning, some hands-on um, healing and, and helping with each other. Um, we're going to really be upgrading our ability to understand and speak to our higher self and allow ourselves to connect to our creator, whatever name we want to put on that creator. And we want to help everyone become a better version of themselves in whatever structure of religion or, or non-structure that they exist in. We want you to connect to the creator and, and find that voice and make that voice a loud voice to always be an influence for you. So love you all. And thank you so much for everything and for showing up and uh, sending you love tonight. Okay. Thank you. Good night. All. Love you.